Good morning from me. Whether you're here in person, great to see you, or at home, or wherever you are watching online. I'm going to ask that for the next few minutes, we do quite a lot of sharing together, you talking to me as well as me talking to you. And we don't have a lot of time, so when I ask, please jump in quick, don't take five minutes to think about it. I want to show you two things that Jesus said from Matthew chapter 5, and they're verses that we've read or heard quite a lot over the last few weeks. Matthew 5, 13, 14, Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And I want to ask two questions and get a response. And the two questions will be on the screen are these. What does it mean to be salt and light? And can we express our being without talking about doing? So what does it mean to be salt and light? Come on, give me 30 seconds. That's all we've got. So throw some ideas to me. means nothing right okay we'll move on sorry right love your neighbor loving love anything else making a difference providing hope we're going to look at that in shortly okay Jesus was speaking say again we enhance the flavors of the world yes that's brilliant and we do. That's what salt does. You put salt in cooking to enhance the flavor. Jesus was speaking primarily about being, not doing. Because our being always determines how we do. And our just being here together makes a difference in people's lives, in our lives together. And our very presence, wherever we are during the week, makes a difference in people's lives just because we are there. Because we are salt and light. We are a church that's all about being more than it's doing. Now don't get me wrong, doing is important, but the real doing flows from our being. Being a people of faith being a people of hope, being a people of love. Wherever we are, we are a community of faith, hope, and love. So let me talk just for a few minutes about faith, hope, and love, beginning with faith. There's a couple of question marks going to appear on the screen. There they are. The word faith, meaning only faith in Yahweh, faith in God. Not faith in other people, not faith in things, but faith in Yahweh, faith in God. How many times does the word faith appear in the old covenant scriptures Genesis through to Malachi and how many times does it appear in the new Matthew through Revelation now you don't know the answers because you haven't looked at this so don't be ashamed any thoughts how many in the old what do you think the old covenant scriptures how many times does faith in God appear in those scriptures hundred any advance on a hundred 123 approximately. What about the New Covenant Scriptures? How many times there? You need to shout to me, I can't hear if you. 500. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Any other thoughts? Okay, the actual number of times that faith appears in those Scriptures is... Nine in the Old Covenant and 214 in the New. Now, that's true of translations. It's not true of paraphrases. But interestingly, there's a word relating to faith which appears far more in the Old Covenant Scriptures than it does in the New. Anybody got a thought on what that word might be? A word related directly to faith. Sorry? Sorry? No, it's no, no. No, the word I'm looking for is an extension of the word faith. Faithfulness. It appears far, far, far more in the Old Covenant Scriptures than it does in the New. But in the Old Covenant Scriptures, it is always applied to Yahweh, never to his people. So what we have in the Old Covenant is a God of faithfulness 
looking for a people of faith in the new covenant. Because Yahweh will keep his promises to us if we've received promises. Yahweh will keep his word if we've received his word. And think about the purposes of God for us here at City Gates. When you think about the promises of God and the giving of God, look at the building we're in. Look at the many things you could think of which show the generosity, the kindness of God. Now here, I'm going to throw a spanner in the works because this might come up later in the discussion. I am going to suggest to you that most people normally have faith. For people to have no faith is very, very rare. Because people have faith in job and career, people have faith in family, people have faith in money. And some people have faith that there's nothing to have faith in. Our faith is in Yahweh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. What about hope? Here's a question for you. What do you think of when I say the word hope? 30 seconds, not long. Any thoughts? What do you think of when I say the word hope? Future. Future? Confident expectation. Assurance, is that, was that right? Did I hear that right? Thank you. Okay. Hope faces Yahweh. Faith faces people. Hope faces Yahweh in order to receive from Yahweh is so that we or others can then have faith to face people. Let me give you a practical example. He's sitting over there. Because Gary is out there exercising faith while the church is praying here and receiving hope. That make sense? But it's also true for ourselves. Now let me give you a statement about hope which is going to come up on the screen. Hope is the investment of ourselves into the eternal character of Yahweh. Faith is the outworking of that investment. So hope is the investment of ourselves into the eternal character of Yahweh. Faith is the outworking of that investment. So true hope is receiving from Yahweh the reality of who and what Yahweh is, what God is. But also receiving the reality of who and what we are in Yahweh. I'm not going to dwell on it, but for 20 years... The world and everybody I knew told me that I was a write-off, I was rubbish, I was nothing because I was addicted to gambling and all the rest of it. But Yahweh had different words for me. True hope is the ever-increasing reality of who and what we are in Yahweh. If we receive real hope from Yahweh, then we can exercise real faith. And I'm going to read a statement that you need to see, otherwise it won't make any sense. Hope received leads to faith in action. No hope received leads to faith in action. Because without hope, faith is inert. Without hope, faith is just not doing anything. It's not being anything. It's just an inert thing. Hope is about Yahweh backing up his people. We do the speaking in faith as Yahweh leads us, and Yahweh does the work in people's lives. And if we're truly living in faith and in hope, people's lives around us will be being changed because of who and what we are as well as what we do. Now I'm going to read some verses to you that will come up on the screen. It's from Ephesians 4. The gifts that Jesus gave, that he gave, were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ 
until all of us come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But, speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. And here's a thought on the way past. We might pick this up later. According to Paul in Ephesians 4, the role of an evangelist is to prepare God's people for works of service and to build up the body of Christ. But that's not the image we often have of an evangelist. Let me now finish two minutes thinking about love. Love is not sentimental. Love is not mere romance. Love is not soft. Because love sometimes has to make hard choices. Love is not about being in control. Because sometimes love has to let go. Love is about growing in maturity together and supporting one another through the difficult periods of growth. And here's what I received, share it with you to finish, to the people of City Gates. We are growing up together in a way that pleases our Father in heaven. So let us look ahead and see what this year holds. Let's pray for a moment. Lord Jesus, as we think together, speak together, talk together, hear together, may your will, your mind, and your thoughts be clear to us that your kingdom would be extended. Amen.